why my hair academia is great. I can't wait to talk about this. My Hero Academia is an anime slash manga that is written and drawn by Kohei Horikoshi and is produced by Studio Bones. This is a superhero anime about a young boy named Midoriya Izuku who in a society that 80% of people have these special abilities called quirks is a quirkless person. He has always had aspirations for being a hero and one day he manages to meet his idol who is the number one hero, All Might, who um, happens to you know bless him with a quirk and what this story is about is Deku well Midoriya Izuku going through the trials and tribulations of going to a superhero high school while facing this superhero society life. My history with My Hero Academia is that I first found out about it when One Punch Man ended and they were announcing the new Shonen Jump type animes that were going to come out. And I was curious about My Hero Academia because, um, well, the name alone was called My Hero Academia. So I thought, oh, that sounds a little interesting. And the fact that it was by Shonen Jump also gave me intrigue. And the fact it was by Studio Bones, um, who, if you don't know who Studio Bones is, they're, it's, they're one of the best anime um, studios in existence. They've done anime greats like Darker Than Black, Noragami, Blood Kablik Blood Bl uh, I'm gonna get there. Blood Blockade Battlefront or Kekai Sensen, Bungo Stray Dogs, Soul Eater, and the fantastic and amazing Mob Psycho 100 and the anime masterpiece which is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. If you don't know already, these guys are my favorite anime studio and the fact that they were going to do a Shonen Jump anime, right, that is said to be in the vein of Naruto, about superheroes, straight after One Punch Man just aired, so I needed another superhero anime, I was already sold to watch this thing. I saw a PV of Deku punching in the red background and I was like, ooh, this looks really cool. And I saw the designs of the characters and I was like, wow, this looks really colorful and pretty. So I just had to watch it as well after seeing that. So yeah, you got me, Kohei. You got me good. When I watched the first episode, I was already intrigued by it, especially with the intro showing all the colorful characters and the fact that Deku was a more relatable protagonist than other ones. People were complaining and saying that he's a crybaby or he's a wimp. And I'm like, well, he has no quirk. Like, what do you expect? Like, duh. Anyway, so after the first episode, I was already intrigued. And then from there, it kept on just getting better and better and better for me. The ending of episode two, um, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Well, you probably know what it is, but when... All Might tells Deku that you can be a hero was one of the most powerful moments I've seen in an anime and that just oh, was beautiful to see, especially with the music. From the first couple episodes, I already went from having intrigue to having investment in this series. Mild spoilers here. When it hit the fourth episode and Deku used his quirk for the first time, I said, all right, this is my new favorite anime number one. Deku, you're my new favorite protagonist as well. And this was the first anime that forced me to read the manga straight away. As soon as episode four ended, I jumped straight to the manga and just started binging it. That ha doesn't happen to me. Usually I'll wait for the next episode, but My Hero Academia was the first anime to get me to do that. So yeah, they they got me really good. <laughs> Kohei, you... You, you got me, man. You, you really, really got me. As you can tell, I'm a big My Hero Academia fan. It is my favorite anime right now. Um, it used, Naruto used to be my favorite anime and My Hero took that spot. But anyway, let's get on to why I think this show is great. First things first, the premise alone is what was sold me and what is a big selling point for this show, which is superheroes in an anime. Like, <laughs> that's, 
that's not hard to sell. I mean, One Punch Man did it pretty quickly. But one of the best things about the show are the quirks and the powers and how different they are and how they're used in different ways. And even the whole hero society, I would say, is one really, really big selling point. Because you're so used to seeing heroes essentially be vigilantes and then everyone just looks at them and says, hey, they're heroic, we can give them a get out of jail free pass. I mean, look at the Avengers, for example. Iron Man got a suit of armor and became a hero and just started killing people and no one put him in jail or anything. He just became a hero and everyone said, oh, thank God. But in My Hero Academia, it's a whole different type of system whereby in order for you to be a hero, you have to have a hero license. You can't, you can't just fight with quirks, even if you have them, because that is called vigilantism. So that concept alone was really interesting to me because they're now, is in that as a hero society with rules and regulations for heroes and powers and the whole, um, well, society. I love the aesthetic of the show as well. I mean, it's very, very comic book-esque and you could tell that Horikoshi was such a big fan of comic books in the sense that um, you have heroes called heroes and villains called villains. It's very generic and straight to the point, but it's really, really stylistic in this hero style world. But uh, enough about the hero society. So the premise of the show itself is the Hero Academy. It is called My Hero Academia for a reason. So UA and the way that the kids have to learn how to use their powers and how to be proper heroes that concept is so so interesting it's not just oh here's how you use your powers and how you get stronger it's oh here's how you as a person who's trying to become a hero has to take care of these situations that pro professional heroes usually do on a day-to-day -day basis one example would be in they would have a training exercise where they'd have to learn how to rescue people in disaster situations and usually stuff like that would blow over your head in a superhero movie. Being used to the MCU, we see explosions and buildings crashing and you just see people die and we're like, oh, they're just collateral damage. My Hero Academia addresses that and it gives you more depth about what it means to be a professional hero. So these kids would learn that when you're trying to rescue someone or when you're even trying to fight, you should always keep damage collateral to a minimum so that civilians are protected and you know a building doesn't drop over their head and there's so many different concepts that Horikoshi weaves into the story that makes me even want to dive deeper into what it means to be a professional superhero and it even makes me look at the MCU guys and realize that they're not the greatest of heroes I mean yeah they're heroic and they save people but are they really great heroes compared to the My Hero lot? Mm. And this is me gushing about just the whole world compared to the characters. The characters in this show are awesome. Starting from the protagonist Deku, he's a guy who is starts off as a quirkless kid and he develops so nicely through the story. His development is some of the best development. Actually, a lot of the characters' developments in this show are some of the best development I've seen. Um, characters learn really quickly and every single situation they're in um, changes them as a character. Horikoshi is the kind of author who would put focus on somebody else that you just wouldn't even realize or expect and he will give them some good depth. So Deku starts off with quirkless and using his quirk in very reckless ways. Seeing him having to tackle different situations while having a super powerful quirk which in turn breaks his body when he uses it because it's a super powerful quirk is so so interesting especially how he has to come up with different ideas to come out of situations and the fact that he wants to make it his own and that is a goal he's been he strives for every single episode i'll say even quirks in general is such a cool concept in the fact that you get different quirks from your parents and they're all inherited and they can form to make new quirks. So there's this one character called Bakugo, right, who would get, who has um, exploding sweat and exploding, wait no, sweat and an igniting quirk, I believe. Yeah, so the sweat and an igniting quirk, which blend together to make an explosion quirk. Stuff like that, that's just, 
interesting and smart. So other characters I like in the show are um, Bakugo, who is a character who he I, before I thought he was like Sasuke, right? But to me, he seems a lot more like Vegeta in that he's always aggressive, but he still wants to be heroic in a way. At first, I did not like him because I'm like, come on, man, just it's not everything on sight bro but after a while he grows on you and he develops so well um like a lot of the other characters another character i love is shoto todoroki if deku was not my favorite character this guy would guaranteed be my favorite character he's just so awesome and he's <laughs> he's a hero god honestly like i don't know he's too powerful for this show but I mean, he works in a way, so um, yeah, I want to see how he develops in the future, so yeah, that'll be interesting. And another fan favourite I'll bring up is All Might. So All Might is the number one hero that Deku meets in order to get a quirk. So he reminds me a little bit of Captain America, whereby at first you think, oh, this guy is going to be too much of a goody two-shoes and kind of campy. And we've already gone over this hero phase, like we're in a new era where we have more cool and stylish heroes. And having him have that campy superhero type old school form and having him have this form whereby he's a regular human and he looks a little bit less, less happy, more depressed and having that dynamic allows us to have more depth of character with him. You feel sorry for him because he has all this power and he has to be the number one hero and he has to be the symbol of peace or else villains will rise up and take over. When you see him in this sickly form you actually see how depressing it is to be a hero and it's not all rose and gold to be fighting the baddies and also when All Might fights oh man all Might can fight, man, and oh, he looks so heroic. He's the embodiment of a superhero to me. He has now eclipsed a lot of Marvel and DC superheroes as a superhero. He's the most heroic one I've seen in a while, and all he wants is just for the good and peace of the world. He's not looking for money or anything like that, so man, I have nothing but respect for All Might. In terms of the anime production, right, so the studio bone side, I'd say. Um, this show is fantastic. When the animation is done well in the show, it's done flipping well. You'll see Sakuga left, right and center and you see characters just go ham in this show, especially with superpowers. You get that movie level of superhero fights in this show and I'm so grateful for that and oh man that's why that's one of the reasons why I love this show as well. What's interesting about the fights as well is even though they are flashy at times it's more to do with the message of the fights. What Horikoshi does so well is he'll set up a lot of the character interactions and the dynamics and the problems and issues um, for a couple of episodes and then he'll bring you to this fight that would embody what has been going on so well usually someone has something they're fighting for really really hard and you really want to root for them when that happens what my hero academia does so well is it really embodies the message of heroism every time someone does something epic it's always about wanting to be a hero or wanting to do something heroic the messages in this show are so fantastic and I feel like it's one of those shows that gives you a lot of motivation. And I know, I know shonen anime is meant to make you motivated anyway, but I don't think the message hits home as much as My Hero Academia. Seeing All Might give his all and fighting with his heart, is, or seeing Deku come out of nowhere, quirkless, trying to save someone, it makes you realize that you yourself you can do anything if you put your mind to it honestly i think studio bones has been doing a fantastic job with this anime and i don't think anybody else would have been able to do it um mainly because of the animation yet again this is the studio that directed mob psycho 100 so when i see some mind-blowing scenes in this show i am i used to be surprised but nowadays okay i'm not gonna lie i'm, I'm still surprised but i'm not like a hundred percent surprised because of course they're going to animate something very beautiful and the music in this show my goodness i heard that the guy who does the music in this show also does the music in haiku so i am not surprised but i'm not gonna lie there are some similarities 
with some of the songs, but the music feels so heroic and it feels so epic in scale that it makes this show shine even more. The openings as well are always fire in My Hero Academia, even the endings, they're, they're always fire. I mean, I think we've come to a point in anime where if you have a trash opening, it's kind of awkward because like, you know, pretty much everybody else has fire openings every season so you know what's going on with that i'm actually so happy that we live in a world where my hero academia exists because it gives me everything i mean it's made by my favorite animation studio it is about superheroes which i love a lot it's a naruto-esque show but by me saying that i wouldn't say it's a carbon copy of naruto it just starts off very similar to naruto and there are elements that you could tell are similar to naruto but when it grows it becomes its own different thing i feel like this show is going to end up being less of a naruto or dragon ball z and lead toward being more of a one piece and hunter x hunter because of the way it takes its show the way that it's written the way that characters are developed and even the whole aesthetic, I feel like it's leading more towards being an Oda type story than a Kishimoto type story, if you get what I'm saying. The manga right now is insane, so I know that this show is going to get infinitely better. <laughs> I don't know how this show keeps on getting better, but it does. And I really can't wait to see what they do in the future seasons. But yeah, that's just me rambling on. I don't want this video to be too long, because... I've realized I've been making some super long videos lately, but um, thank you very much for listening to me ramble about My Hero Academia. Um, do you agree or disagree with anything I'm saying? Let me know in the comment section. I'm open to discussion. Um, please like and subscribe and hopefully you'll be getting another video soon. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Whatever. We'll wait and see. And um, I hope you have a great day. All right.